This video tutorial will explain the molecular shape and the arrangement of electrons around the central atom. There are six basic arrangements that we are going to cover of electrons around a central atom. Each of these six basic arrangements will result in six different basic electron geometries. Now, all of the molecular shape are based on the Vesper bonding theory. The Vesper stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion, and it is a theory that predicts some molecular shapes based on the idea that pairs of valence electrons surrounding an atom repel each other. And it states that repulsion between the sets of valence electrons surrounding an atom causes these sets to be oriented as far as possible. So first, we are going to begin with the uh, shape of AX2 that we are going to cover. Uh, as an electron geometry, as you can uh, read over here, it's linear. And since this one, there's no uh, lone pair in, um, added to this uh, molecule, also the molecular geometry will be the same as the electron geometry and linear. And as you can see here, the two atoms, no matter how I try to uh, hold them and push them next to each other, they will keep on repelling each other to obtain a 180 degree angle. Moving forward to uh, having one central atom and the three terminal atoms, and I am going to call this AX3. A, I mean by that the purple atom, the central one, and 3X, the three white terminal bonding uh, atoms. So here, when we add one more atom to the molecule, more repulsion, we, we can see more repulsion, and the angle resulting from this is 120 degrees. Now, this terminal atom can be also replaced by a lone pair. So as you can see here, the electron geometry is still the same trigonal planner. So if I have a lone pair, it's a trigonal planner. Or if I have a bonding atom, it's a trigonal planner. But the only difference is in the shape. This shape is trigonal planner as well, but this shape is a bent. So it's just the central with the two uh, bonding atoms. Uh, a good example of this could be uh, SO2 uh, as AX2E or BF3 as an example of B, the purple one, the central, and F fluorine, 3 fluorine. Moving forward to AX4, this electron geometry is called the tetrahedral and also as a molecule geometry is called also tetrahedral. You can notice here that the angle is getting smaller, 109.5. Now, if I replace one bonding electron, one bonding atom with a non-bonding electron, the, the, the electron geometry is still the same, tetrahedral, but the shape has changed to trigonal pyramidal. When in real molecule, the angle is slightly less than 109.5. It's exactly 107. Now, if I replace another bonding atom with a lone pair, you can see now the shape is bent. And the angle is less than 109.7, it's 104.5. The electron geometry is still tet tetrahedral, but the shape now is bent. A good example of this could be H2O. And a good example of the previous one is NH3. Now, moving forward and going to the uh, trigonal bipyramidal shape. As you can see in this one, I have... Uh, two angles, but we're not covering the angles. I have two angles, um, uh, 180 uh, degree between the horizontal uh, atoms, and there each one is 90 degree with the one above. So if I move my molecule this way, you can see here um, a straight line and two uh, atoms from uh, below. Uh, the molecule geometry is also trigonal by pyramidal. A good example of this is uh, PCL5. And finally, another uh, model is the octahedral, where I have uh, a central atom bonded to six atoms. So 
And as you can see, the electron geometry is the same as the molecule geometry since no lone pair is introduced to it. So the best way to draw this is just to put a central atom and uh, draw four atoms in a form of X shape around it, plus one atom up and one atom down. Thank you for listening.